Hey y'all, welcome back. So at this point, what we are doing is um, assembling the piston rings on the pistons and then um, dropping them into the engine block. So I've got two done already. Um, and so far so good. And what I'm doing is going through and checking the ring gap clearance and the side clearance as I go through each piston. So what we're going to do is I've got my first ring, my second ring, and then um, my oil ring, and then both sides of that come with it. So um, this one comes with two rings, one on top, one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just grab the next available ring. I'm going to take it over here. On the cylinder, oop, number six. This is tough to hold and shoot at the same time. I'm gonna pop it in there. It's a lot easier to do with two hands. I'm trying to hold the camera. Um, so I've got it in there, and now I'm going to use this piston to push that ring in enough so that it's going to be even inside of. The cylinder and I've got my feeler gauges here so I've written down my ring gap um, tolerances I've got 0.20 to 0.36 max so I'll grab my feeler gauge and I'm going with millimeters here and there's the gap I'm gonna try and drop that in and it looks like 0.35 works so hopefully 0.38 does not Otherwise, it would be outside of the tolerance. And 0.38 does work. So, it's telling me that ring, or that gap is too large. I just kind of want to find out what it is. Okay, 0.40 does not fit. That one's just outside of the tolerance range. So what I'm going to do, take that back out. And grab a different ring. Okay, same thing, and then go ahead get that ring pushed in there cool got it started got this piston again and push it in there okay and the reason i have um this the engine block turned sideways is because it's a lot easier for me to push the piston in and also access the connecting rod on this side as I've done for those. So there's the gap. 0.38 barely fits. Okay, so just outside of tolerance. And I think it's, you know, in part because they're trying to hone it down to get all those um, the etches out of there. So let's try one more ring. One more time. And this is, this does take a little bit of time. Um, it's going to take you a little bit of time with each piston you set, but uh, it should. You shouldn't be in a rush when you're doing this. So plan on having a lot of time to work on this. I've, I, you know, I did two the other day, and I'm probably only going to get two in today. But um, that's all right. Okay, cool. I've got 3.8, which does not fit. That's promising. Let's see if 0.35 works does not perfect just to make sure we're not under the minimum tolerance let's try 0.25 so 0.25 0.25 does fit okay so I have my um, I have a ring picked out for this piston for ring one now we move on to ring two so I set ring one aside over here because I know I'll be using that one uh, let's get ring two and we'll go ahead and pop it in there. You gotta be careful with these. It's I probably shouldn't be doing it with one hand because they're they're fairly fragile. It's easy to snap and it sucks if you do snap one of them because this piston set only came with the exact amount needed. So I've got that in there. Let's check our tolerances. So um, our middle ring is going to be 0.37 to 0.63. So hopefully this does not fit.
and it does not. Cool, I am under my max. So now I'm just gonna go down to 0.38, and if that fits, then we're good. And it does, cool. So that one's going to work. 0.25 to 0.76. And I'm gonna do one of these at a time because it's gonna be tough to do. You can't really check two simultaneously. And it does not fit, good news, cool. 0 0.26, 0 0.26, oops, does fit, so we are good. This is adjustable, so it doesn't matter. And let's do our last ring. There we go. Now I'm gonna come over here to the connecting rod that it will, or I'm sorry, the um, crankshaft, and where that connecting rod's gonna be. I'm just gonna wheel that out here. And it's gonna be this one, so you can see it lines up with that cylinder. So again, I'm gonna take this, zero it out, and we're gonna do measurement here. Got 51.12. I'm gonna check it both ways, perpendicular from each other. So we got 50.73, which that's actually smaller than 50.72. So I'm gonna check that one more time. So 51.13. Point eight four. So it looks like we're in our clearance. Um, we're looking good. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to get this set into the engine block. So we've got our F for front, a little notch allowing us to know that that's where that goes. We'll pull these bolts back out. Okay. And I'm also, before I put this in, I'm going to put some assembly lube on the inside of here and on the crankshaft so that we make sure when we do our first startup, we've got some lubrication in there before the, some pre-lubrication before the oil makes it to the crankshaft. So, again, helps protect the bearings. Bolts are out. I'm just going to set this piece here and then I'll come back for it once I'm ready to install that. So, just a little bit of goop on here. That's probably more than plenty. And I'm going to put a little bit on this side. Um, and also, it's important to uh, clean off that position on the crankshaft where you're going to be putting your connecting rod. Uh, make sure there's no debris that's going to get caught in there. And again, I'm just using this shops, this uh, soft shop rag because that's not going to score it or anything. Okay. All right. Smear that on there. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold my piston and do this at the same time. Um, yeah, because I need to be able to grab the connecting rod so it doesn't scrape into the cylinder. So I'm gonna reach, oh, I actually do need to uh, wipe down the inside of that cylinder as well. So I'm gonna grab a new rag. Same thing. Clean out any debris that could be in there. Nice wrap all the way around, fold it. Do one more pass. And then I'm actually going to take this oil and lubricate that cylinder. Just do a ring around and then work that oil in there so that your piston slides in nice. 
it's not fighting it on its way in. Okay. Center the crankshaft so that when you push that in there, and I want it at the lowest spot so I can get my, my piston all the way in, but you want that to line up kind of center of, of your uh, cylinder there. And I'm gonna come back just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good to me. So it's right there in the middle. Okay, and now I need my piston ring compressor. When you compress this, just make sure you're past your oil rings. Okay, I'm gonna get that as tight as I possibly can. I think that's about it. And you know what, it's probably better to do it here because you really don't want this scratching up your, uh, your head surface, so. Um, again, make sure I'm facing the front. I'm gonna put one hand in the back to catch that rod. And then I got this one coming in on the front. Okay. And I'm just actually pulling ever so slightly on the rod as well so that it doesn't push back up and allow that ring to slip out. Not much, just enough to keep pressure on it. Going real gently, not forcing anything. And there it goes. And it just catches it there. Uh, so there we go. We got one in there. And using that rubber handle is good too because I don't want to damage that surface. And I'm just tapping it really lightly. And it's going pretty easily. I'm just tapping it with like the ends of my fingers. I'm guiding it into that position. There we go. And again, you want this to line up the correct way so I can see that this crack lines up with that mark. I'm probably going to have to turn this a little bit just so I can access both. But now that we're all the way in place, that's okay to do. And that will probably actually help push your rod against your um, crankshaft so you know you got a good solid fit. Torque specs on these are 20 foot pounds, so it's really low torque spec. I didn't see an angle, a torque to um, yield angle, but I'm going to double check because I feel like these might actually also require a torque to spec and then an angle. So cool, got that all the way in there by hand, and now I'm just going to crank it down to 20 foot pounds. And there it is. And there you have it. Um, one final thing I'm going to do is check my side clearance between here and the journal. Um, it should be good because this is the same rod that was in there before. So I'm not quite as worried about that, but I'm going to check it anyway. 0.13 does look like that was my next one down and that did fit so that's kind of my max there so good to check that before you move on and then I'm going to turn the crankshaft to make sure I don't have any doesn't feel like it's causing it to bind up or anything and that feels like it's moving pretty smoothly so um, I do like to turn the crankshaft after every piston is installed because that allows me to make sure if there one is catching or binding, I'm going to know which one it is. But that's all so far flowing really well. So um, that's it. I'm just going to continue to do this. I'll probably set up a time lapse and uh, finish out the rest of these pistons.